good thank you sir okay. Okay, so let's start with so pulses. What is a pulse? So the pulse, as uh, your friend said, that is a legume, right? So legume, uh, which is a Latin word, uh, which is derived from the word leaker, right? So which means to gather. Uh, seed pods will have to be gathered or picked up by the hands. Unlike grasses, like cereals, we uh, call the harvesting process as. Uh, um, uh, this one a uh, reaping but in pulses we just cut it out uh, or we pick up the pulse pods right so those fruits what we see those are called as pods and those are picked up by the hands and the term pulse is derived from a latin word which uh, means uh, i mean the word is a pulse and which means the pottage or the thick soup so we usually prepare like uh, curries right dal we prepare out of most of the pulses so that's how we can relate to it correlate to it like a thick soup a thick soup will be prepared out of it right so pulses what is the importance of pulse as we all know that pulse crops uh, we usually have this uh, nitrogen fixation characteristics uh, in uh, pulse uh, which is we don't find in any other crops maybe cereal soil seed they do not fix except the soybean but uh, most of the other uh, uh, categories of crops they do not fix nitrogen right so we call them as grain legumes okay and these are the important food crops after cereals in our country and pulse crops play important role in agricultural economy as well and india is the highest producer of pulses in the world right so it produces most of the pulse crops uh, in, uh, in the country yet the productivity of pulse crop is too less when compared to other uh, countries okay so as we know they fix the atmospheric nitrogen and because they have deep taproot system so they can observe more moisture content even if the water is present in the deeper layers of the soil as well right so the per capita requirement of the pulse according to icmr is about 150 gram and according to fao it is about 140 gram but in 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 a, in the country it is only availability is only up to 48 gram per day whereas we have to uh, what do you say farmers have to buck up to produce more pulse production and all though there are various reasons why why pulse production is less in the country we can uh, point out so many reasons why it is so less but yet we have to buck up though india is leading uh, pulse producing country yet the productivity is less we hardly we get per hectare say some uh, 600 kgs or 700 kgs maybe less in some parts of the country as well so we have to think about how to increase the pulse production in the country okay so the important kharif pulses in our country is pigeon pea or the red gram and uh, green gram or uh, uh, black gram and cow pea on the horse gram and moth bean so these are uh, six important kharif pulses we can say and uh, so today uh, i'll be talking about among the kharif pulses red gram green gram and black gram so first we'll talk about the red gram as we all know these pulses belong to the family leguminaceae family since they fix the atmospheric nitrogen so the botanical name of pigeon pea or the red gram is kajanus kajan and it can it is also called as red gram arhar tur gungo pea congo pea no ip why i am giving all these names you know in exams these can be asked just like what i told yesterday for millet these can be asked sometimes okay so pigeon pea when it comes to uh, this crop it is next to uh, chickpea okay chickpea or the bengal gram so in area and production in our country chickpea stands first and then the pigeon pea all right so this red gram milling industry comes only after rice milling industry since we know that the covering seed coat will be there on the red gram seed and uh, that uh, removal of that seed coat is a is a, such a huge task so uh, just like rice milling industries we have red gram milling industries as well and pigeon pea seeds are split into dal which is rich in uh, protein fat iron and iodine and in in, in our country uh, the area under pigeon pea is almost nearly say some 4 million hectare 4 million hectare but the productivity is too less okay and uh, there is so much of a contradiction or say 
um, uh, so much of uh, doubt about the origin of pigeon pea. In some textbooks, you may find it is uh, African origin, and some textbooks you may find it is uh, of Indian origin. Okay, since uh, I I uh, prefer to tell you that you can consider both the countries as uh, uh, origin. Okay, some wild species we find in Africa, and some we find in uh, India. So uh, you can just uh, if at all if this question uh, is kind of contradictory type so even if uh, it may not be asked in exam but if it is asked in exam uh, so uh, you can either mark africa or india but uh, the whoever is correcting the paper i don't know uh, that person has to think which uh, which is the correct origin or he has to uh, get a uh, uh, what do you say answer from an authentic source Okay, and the closest wild relative of pigeon pea is Atolesia canifolia, and it was called it was there in cultivation about three thousand five uh, five hundred years ago, and it was introduced in Africa about thousand years ago. So, if at all, if you get any text which uh, tells about the Indian origin of um, uh, pigeon pea and number of years when it was introduced, so you can just uh, compare and you can uh, uh, remember those things. Okay, and distribution, it has been distributed over like 50 to 60 countries, especially Asia, Africa, America. And it is gray, uh, grown for grain, green manuring, for fodder, forage, and as a sole crop, intercrop, mixed crop, and in sequential cropping system. Okay, here I want to, you can just drop in the chat box. What is the difference between an intercrop and a mixed crop? You can just drop it here. Okay, so now coming to the classification. Uh, we have this Kajanas Kajan variety flavors and Kajanas Kajan variety bicolor. So these are the two types we find in uh, um, this pigeon pea. So this flavors type is mainly grown in southern part of the country and this is mainly grown in the north India. Okay, so this flavors is known as Tur and it is a short durated annual and it has a shorter or the smaller plant and uh, flowers are yellow in color okay and uh, they have uh, plain pots we do not uh, if at all if uh, in maharashtra also you might have seen this pigeon pea so i need not have to explain you much here so these have lesser number of pots with two to three seeds per pots will be there and it is grown as a field crop mainly for the seed purpose we grow uh, in southern india but this bicolor it is known as a arhar okay and it is a long durated late maturing and kind of uh, uh, what do you say uh, biennial or uh, we can say perennial type of uh, pigeon pea this is and the flowers have yellow with purple colored streaks okay and they have dark colored pots with four to five seeds and it is specially grown in northern india so you can find the difference if at all uh, uh, you visit somewhere where you can see the perennial type of uh, pigeon pea you can compare very easily so i have just collected few pictures okay so this you can find this is the um, flavors type and this is a uh, bicolor type of uh, pigeon pea and there are again uh, duration since it is like uh, up to 150 days uh, earlier it was being grown for 150 days uh, now uh, again uh, medium duration short duration though the short duration is up to 150 days uh, even then it is too long right 150 days means almost like five months five and a half months it will be there that, that is short duration so you can imagine medium and long duration how long it may take right so short duration even uh, scientists are trying to find uh, still extra uh, short durated variety so that they can complete their life cycle within say 120 days or 130 days as well so these are few varieties you must have seen these uh, upas 120 uh, 120 or t 21 so these you might might have found in many texts as well okay so this is the uh, classification based on the duration short duration medium and long duration so this one eight to three hundred days uh, this we mainly find in northern part of the country okay so now coming to the morphology so as we know that this right uh, yeah, this uh, uh, legumes fix atmospheric nitrogen how exactly this happened so I'll just uh, explain brief about how actually this happens we know that uh, uh, this pigeon piece uh, perennial uh, earlier I mean originally it is a perennial crop but uh, now many uh, breeding processes many advances have been uh, taking uh, taking place so that's how uh, this crop uh, can be considered now as an annual 
so now grown as an annual and it is an indeterminate plant can anybody tell me what is uh, um, indeterminate plant what is an indeterminate plant you can just type it out okay so i want to know where exactly you know uh, whether you understand the terms or not so that's that is important okay indeterminate plant anybody anybody you can just drop it in the chat box no issues okay let me continue since it is a perennial we can call it as a woody shrub okay this uh, pigeon pea plant is woody branchy and uh, it can go up to four meter more than i mean the uh, height of the plant okay and it is a deep tap rooted and uh, leaves alternate pinnately trifoliate trifoliate means you must have seen these leaves something like this okay so this we can find uh, so this is trifoliate system any legume you can find three leaves will be attached together so trifoliate and pots will be compressed pots you know that those are the fruits you can see in this picture okay and uh, uh, unshattering types uh, shattering means breaking when uh, completing the maturity the pots sometimes uh, uh, they start to uh, shatter or they will break open and the seeds will fall on the ground so that should not happen okay that is called a shattering and unshattering type nowadays we find varieties of with unshattering type of uh, uh, quality okay seeds weight about uh, weigh about 100 gram per thousand seed and uh, especially mainly i mean uh, these kharif pulses no they these have usually epigel type of germination epigel means i hope uh, you are aware of the term epigel germination so this pigeon pea is the only crop which is having hypogeal germination okay this is the only kharif pulse crop which is having hypogeal germination otherwise it can also be called as cryptocotyledonous type of germination so these two are important in case of pigeon pea okay so now coming to uh, the uh, system or the uh, what do you say uh, nodule system so this in on this root i hope everybody can see this so on the rooting system we can find the small balls like structure which are called as nodules so this is you are aware of well aware of right so what happens how this nitrogen is fixed we know that in the atmosphere uh, almost 72% of nitrogen is there yet the plants cannot take up that nitrogen directly from the atmosphere right so that has to be fixed somewhere we know that biological nitrogen fixation is a process that happens in the legume plants but how does it happens actually so uh, the uh, form of nitrogen which is present in atmosphere that cannot be directly taken up by the plant it has to be converted to some other form so that the plant can take it up okay so that nitrogen we usually find uh, in uh, in the form of gases say like n2 n2 or no2 uh, these forms we usually find in the atmosphere so that cannot be taken up by the plant plant needs uh, the nitrogen either in the form of nitrate no3 or uh, mainly you know three some some crops like rice sugar cane potato uh, they take up nitrogen in the form of ammonical form nh4 nh4 plus so that is the form they usually take but most of the pulses they take nitrogen in the form of nitrate so this n2 or n2o or no2 that gaseous form of nitrogen cannot be taken up by the plant so what happens these nodules will be there no uh, i mean uh, a symbiotic bacteria we know that is rhizobium right so that rhizobium uh, will have a symbiotic relationship with this nodules i mean uh, we can say that in the nodules rhizobium bacteria uh, will be uh, will uh, reside and that will form uh, or that we call it as a bacteroid after the entry of this rhizobium into the plant we can call it as a bacteroid okay so there that bacteroid what happens that takes up this nitrogen and it changes the form and it stores in the root okay so that's how that nitrogen can be taken up by the plant later so we know the enzyme that is nitrogenase which is really sensitive to oxygen and it has to be avoided and we know about the leg hemoglobin pigment i hope you all you are all aware of this okay so if at all if we have any doubts here uh, we can discuss at last okay i'm just giving you a brief idea about legumes how actually it happens all right so this nitrogen will be taken up by the plant and then it will uh, 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 take that nitrogen for its uh, 
uh, usual processes all right so that's how it usually happens in most of the legumes nodules will be there rhizobium will be there and that becomes a bacterioid and the nitrogen uh, genes enzyme uh, will help in the conversion of the nitrogen and this nitrogenous enzyme is very sensitive to oxygen so that oxygen has to be taken away from that part of the plant okay so that uh, uh, where this uh, leg hemoglobin comes into act so this leg hemoglobin uh, that will take away the oxygen from that nitrogenous enzyme and that's how the nitrogen can be fixed in, in the plant roots all right so now coming to the varieties and hybrids so you must have seen so many varieties and uh, hybrids uh, uh, local varieties national varieties so i'm just giving you brief idea about hybrid not go getting deeper into varieties and hybrids okay so first ever hybrid was icph8 I, from acrisat i hope everybody is aware of this and similarly this upas 120 upas 120 this is extra short duration uh, this is i mean within 120 to 130 days so uh, that will complete its life cycle similarly bark also has tested a variety tt401 so like this you can find n number n number of uh, varieties and hybrids and uh, this is a pure luck okay and uh, one uh, one uh, variety i think or uh, gulbarga tur we call it so that has got a, a gi tag recently gulbarga tag from karnataka okay gulbarga is a place and uh, gulbarga tur has got a gi tag recently and coming to the climate and soil most of the um, pulses they can grow on any type of soil it's not like um, it has should it should have a very good fertile soil no it uh, they can survive uh, in on most of the soils so it is highly drought resistant crop and the short days all the uh, curry pulses usually they are short days okay so since it is a short day plant it uh, results in less vegetative growth and rains during flowering and pot development are having adverse effect on the crop obviously and the temperature range of 18 to 27 degrees celsius is desirable for them well drained medium heavy uh, soils loams are the best soil for pigeon pea and the ph range of 5.5 to 8 is uh, good for pigeon pea saline alkaline and waterlogged soils are not suitable for this um, um, uh, what you say uh, pigeon pea i mean most of the pulses they cannot survive under saline alkaline and waterlogged since it will affect the nodulation okay and then the seed bed preparation so fine seed bed with the friable uh, soil since uh, we know that the seeds of most of the pulses are small right so uh, we have a better uh, fine seed bed we should avoid st stones and gravels in the uh, field seed rate of uh, 12 to 15 kg for short duration and uh, 10 to 12 kg for medium duration and 8 to 10 kg per hectare for long duration if at all in a mixed stand 50% of seed rate can be used here. So a seed rate of uh, 2.5 to 3 kg per hectare can be used in hybrid. So spacing you can see here. For long duration, obviously, we will have more spacing when compared to the short and medium duration. So guys, you did not answer for my question, like what is an indeterminate plant? So we know that uh, uh, the vegetative stage and the reproductive stage of a plant, right? So when uh, when a plant is growing, if it completes its vegetative cycle and then enters into the reproductive stage uh, completely so then we call it as a determinate if at all the stages of i mean the vegetative stage and the reproductive stages are overlapping like vegetation is also growing also it is also fruiting so when these go simultaneously then we call it as an indeterminate type of plant so most of the pulses are indeterminate uh, in nature and in uh, today's uh, varieties, uh, uh, what do you say? There are varieties and hybrids which are being uh, 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 synchronized, or, uh, which have synchronous flowering, or say which have a determinate type of uh, uh, growth we can find in today's varieties. Okay, all right. So, next optimum population, of, uh, we can calculate based on the uh, spacing okay so early duration we have 333 into 10 raised to 3 like that you can just go through this okay and uh, coming to crop management as, as i told you for land preparation it should be mm, a fine seed bed it should not have any stones or gravelly or uh, uh, clots or the pets of the soil it should be a fine seed bed and when it comes to seed treatment we will treat with the fungicide insecticide and then the rhizobium or a pgpr also plant growth promoting 
rhizobia so that can also be used and we can also use phosphorus solubilizing bacteria uh, for seed treatment so fungicide we will treat with and then the uh, insecticide and sometimes we will go for uh, uh, these uh, bio uh, agents also we can use and rhizobia culture and phosphobacteria we can use okay and uh, there is one uh, term we find specially in uh, pigeon pea that is removal of the terminal portion of the plant about say 5 to 6 centimeter 50 days after sowing so that is uh, pinching out the terminal portion of the plant so that that energy can be uh, transmitted or transported to uh, branches lateral branches and it gives more lateral branches and the fruits so this process uh, this is very important in case of pulses especially so it increases the number of branches and pods per plant and also the test weight okay and nutrient since we know uh, pulses are leguminous or the nitrogen fixing uh, plant so what we can do is we can reduce the nitrogen rate so usually the basic uh, ratio we follow for uh, a uh, pulses is 1 is to 2 is to 1. So, one portion of nitrogen, two portion of phosphorus and one portion of potash can be applied. So, that is how we can see here, uh, especially in pulses, we see uh, that uh, the nitrogen application, rate of nitrogen application will be less, half of it, okay, when compared to other crops. So, here 12.5 kg nitrogen and 25 kg P2O5 and 12.5 again K2O. Similarly, in irrigated condition, we uh, change accordingly, uh, according to the places and the region we are growing that particular crop. So, when we apply this uh, nitrogen in smaller amount to leguminous crop, <coughs> it just helps in... Uh, uh, initiating the nitrogen fixation. So, this amount of nitrogen we call it as a starter dose, okay, starter dose of nitrogen which we usually apply in uh, pulses. We do not call, call it as a starter dose in case of cereals. We call it uh, just for legumes or the pulses because it just initiates the nitrogen. Once it starts in uh, 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 fixing the nitrogen, then we need not have to apply uh, this nitrogen externally. Also, we can uh, we have to apply this zinc sulfate and uh, foliar spray of 1% urea for yield improvement sometimes. Okay, and uh, weed management. So, the critical stage is about say 45 to 60 days after sowing. So, uh, since uh, pigeon pea is uh, having slow growth initially, uh, initially 60 days it will be having slow growth. We have to keep the field weed free and we know the spacing of weed, uh, this uh, red gram, it is too much, right? So, we can go for an intercrop as well, uh, the crop which can finish within 60 days. So, there also we can go for intercrop or uh, two hand weeding, one at 25 to 30 days after sowing, one at the second uh, quarter or say. Uh, this uh, 45 to 60 days after sowing we can go through and uh, 2 to 3 intercultivation and you remember for most of the pulses we apply pendimethalin as a pre-emergent okay three uh, pre-emergent we apply and this is also called as god gifted herbicide pendimethalin since we it can be used for uh, more than 60 crops okay so that's why this is a pendim uh, pendimethalin is known as god gifted uh, herbicide and there should be enough moisture and uh, avoid cloths during the spray and early post emergent application of imezata fire can be done and uh, harvesting so this uh, entire the plant can be cut entirely right when 80 percent of the pots mature since it is an indeterminate plant it is very difficult to um, expect the maturity of the plant so when we see most of the plants have uh, matured or 80 percent of the pots have matured then we can cut out the pots there so heap for two to three days and then drying and then processing and then seeds are consumed in the form of split cotyledons are no, known as dal so dehulling process or the removing of the upper cover of that seed so it is done in two steps one is loosening the husk from the cotyledon uh, you must have seen brown color we usually find on the red gram so that is really difficult to uh, easily uh, remove that uh, seed coat right or the husk so that has to be loosened first and then split them using a roller machine or stone chucky so uh, that is how the uh, red gram will be processed Otherwise, uh, if we are going for a direct crop, then that is the cultivation. If we are using red gram for a transplanting, we usually select a long durated type of red gram varieties for transplanting. So, transplantation will be done in the month of August. 
the, these seeds can be soaked in 0.2% calcium chloride and then it can be dried under shade for 7 hours to harden the seeds. After hardening we can go for seed treatment with rhizobium or uh, PSBs or PGPRs we can go through. And uh, sow the seeds in uh, poly bags 30 to 45 days prior to transplanting. So, if we are uh, having this transplanting type of red crumb, we can save the main field time over here. If at all uh, we are going for transplanting. But we should be uh, careful about selecting which uh, variety of red crumb we are choosing it for transplantation and all. So that's how and in, in, in the country uh, in recent data what I saw uh, in 2021 Rajasthan is leading in uh, area and production of red gram and then the MP but the productivity of red gram is more in Punjab uh, around 800 kgs whereas in all other states we find very less productivity okay. So that was about uh, uh, red gram so this is a red gram nursery picture. And after uh, 45 days and then we can transplant into the main field. So till that we can have some other crop in the field as well. Okay, so now coming to black gram. This black gram and green gram, they do not have uh, uh, much of complexity uh, to explain about. So this just goes similar to uh, this uh, pigeon pea only. So the common name or uh, we usually uh, call it as with the name of urd bean. Urd gram or black gram, Udad or mash, Urad, Udad. So we have different names. So this is black gram and when it is split, split grams we can see here. So this important pulse crop which is grown in all the three seasons such as Karif, Rabi and Summer. So uh, you must have seen uh, very much aware that this Udad uh, black gram is used in uh, preparation of idlis, dosas and all right. So it is consumed in the form of dal, hul or split, husk or unhusk or parched. It is a chief constituent of papad, idli, dosas and spice balls, right. So we are aware of this. So what is it, it uh, black gram um, makes it uh, different. So this ural grain contains about 24% of protein. So can uh, can you tell me guys among all the pulses which is the protein issues or which, which pulse crop is having highest protein content, be it curry for uh, rabi. Which pulse crop do you think has highest protein content? Anyone? Green gram, uh, mm, soybean, green gram, okay. Any other answers you have? Any other answers? P, black gram. Okay, so it is lentil. Lentil is having highest amount of protein when compared to all other. Okay, and this uh, uh, black gram is a richest source of phosphoric acid among all the per, per, uh, pulses. So five to six percent richer than other crops. So when grinded with grinded with the uh, uh, water, it attains somewhat mucilaginous pasty character on account of phosphoric acid. So uh, when we go for preparation of this Id idli batter or dosa batter, you may find when we just grind this uh, um, uh, soaked uh, black gram, we will find very sticky kind of thing, right? So that is because of the phosphoric acid and it is used as a nutritive uh, fodder, uh, especially for milch cattle and as a green manuring crop. So uh, being deep rooted, it helps in binding the soil particles and also helps in soil erosion. Okay, it fixes atmospheric nitrogen to the soil through symbiosis and improves the fertility. So, this is common for every pulse crop. And origin, so black green is a native of India. Progenitor is Faciolus sub, sublobatans. And the distribution, uh, it has been distributed over Asia and African continent. And countries like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Myanmar, so Ceylon. So, these are the countries which are uh, uh, mainly focusing on this black gram production. So now coming to the classification of black gram which is Vigna mungo or sometimes you may find Faciolus mungo as well. So this Vigna mungo again there are two types of uh, 
um, classif i mean sorry uh, types here one is vigna mungo uh, variety niger and vigna mungo variety viridis so this niger is actually uh, early maturing and uh, they have large seeds large and bl black colored seeds will be there in case of viridis these have longer maturity and small uh, seeds are small and green in color okay and coming to the climatic and soil requirement it is just like uh, pigeon pea only it can be grown on variety soils but uh, can be arranged from sandy soil to heavy soils and most ideal soil is well drained loam with ph 4.7 to 7.5 and it cannot be grown on alkaline and saline soil since it will affect the nodulation it betters uh, it is better on black cotton soil or loams we can say it can tolerate up to 42 degrees celsius but optimum is 25 to 35 degrees celsius and it is a short day plant so these are the different varieties given here so azad one you must have read it is a very uh, uh, famous uh, variety and seed rate of black gram it ranges between 15 to 20 kg per hectare okay so black gram you must have seen or you must have been to the field there right so rhizobium obviously uh, it is uh, common for every pulse crop spacing is 30 by 10 so uh, it uh, the field preparation it is common uh, for almost all the crop so uh, once plowing and then the harrowing and then the leveling or the planking we can say right the soil should be well drained and leveled so, and uh, removal of stubbles of previous crop overcomes the danger of termite attack otherwise these uh, uh, previous crop stubbles no they usually carry termites termite eggs that's why it is better to remove stubbles and the pulses are really sensitive uh, uh, in that matter and the sowing method uh, drilling or broadcasting and fertilizer as i told you 25 50 25 so before sowing it can be treated with 2 percent calcium chloride for half an hour and then it can be dried and then we can uh, the seeds can be treated with uh, our bio agents rhizobium psb or trichoderma so water management it is a purely a rain fed crop which is grown during kharif but it can be grown in uh, rabi as well it can be grown in summer as well uh, but in uh, rabi season we have to take care of the irrigation facility there so excess moisture at any stage it affects the crop and the critical period uh, in this crop is flowering to pot development so most of the pulses this uh, these are uh, very important uh, stages critical stages be it for weed management or be it for water management so uh, this flowering we have to uh, avoid i mean when the plant starts initiating the flowers we have to avoid irrigation otherwise sometimes it will lead to the uh, flower drops so we have to avoid during that time after or before before is better um, before flowering it is better to irrigate so crop needs a weed free period of first 30 days and then uh, it is if it is grown as an intercrop with sorghum pigeon pea or pearl millet interculture should be given according to the main crop okay and uh, when it is sown as a sole crop one or two weedings are needed so otherwise two intercultivation and otherwise chemically we can go for pendimethalin or metalachlor uh, sometimes and harvesting so when most of the pots turn to black in color harvesting can be done here so early harvesting which results in immature seeds whereas delayed harvesting shattering of pots will be there and reduction in the yield so it should better to harvest in the uh, morning hours only uh, to avoid this shattering otherwise uh, we may lose most of our yield there so threshing may be done after sufficient drying in the sunlight or uh, with the help of multi-cut crop thresher we can do that okay so that was about black gram so now coming to the green gram it is just like uh, uh, black gram only so there is nothing uh, so much about green gram to speak about so this uh, first in our country that uh, chickpea stands first in area production and then the pigeon pea and then uh, this green gram crumbs after green gram we have other pulses there okay so this is uh, a relish for easy digestibility or uh, split seeds or it can be used as a green pods and the horns or the stalks of the plant can be used as a fodder and uh, husk and split beans are useful as li for livestock seed it makes a good cover crop and soil binder you will have to explain me the terms later guys what is this cover crop what is soil binder you will explain me later so it is an excellent green manure which is easily decomposed so the biomass is having around 
1.5 percent of nitrogen and it contains about 22 to 23 percent protein. So, the sprouted green gram seeds have ascorbic acid that is vitamin C, riboflavin, riboflavin and thiamine that is vitamin B. Seeds are boiled and used in soups made into porridge uh, with rice or uh, wheat. So, this is a semi-erect a uh, herbaceous uh, annual legume crop again it is having trifoliate and we usually find on the pulse crop small hair like structures will be there a uh, chickpea or a green gram black gram so those are called as trichomes okay so these trichomes are less in number when compared to the black gram in case of green gram and pubescent pods pubescent means again they'll have small hair like structures on the pot you may find or you may feel also sometimes and all the pulses have taproot system so there is nothing much to explain here and origin is about uh, India and it is uh, distributed over many countries and soil well drained sandy to loam soil 6.5 to 7.5 neutral pH temperature 25 to 35 and rainfall about 600 to 800 mm uh, and it is a photosensitive short day plant and it cannot tolerate water logging yet it is a hardiest crop of all the pulses it can survive but water logging it cannot survive varieties first variety released in india t1 in 1948 so latest short duration variety co or gj8 duration 55 to 60 days and number of pots 25 to 30 per plant and yield up to 900 kg per hectare okay so field preparation just like on any other pulse crop we better to have a fine till and it forms uh, channels and beds we can have so amendments for soil surface crusting so to tide over that crusting we can apply lime at the rate of 2 ton per hectare along with fym or sometimes coir pith also we can add and seed rate if it is a pure cow crop about 20 kg per hectare if it is a mixed crop 8 to 10 kg per hectare we can apply uh, and uh, fertilizer application again in the same ratio like 1 is to 2 uh, 1 is to 2 is to 1 and sometimes if the soil is deficient in sulfur or zinc we can go for application of sulfur or the zinc accordingly and uh, irrigation immediately after sowing and then the life saving irrigation and uh, then we can have depending on the climatic conditions we can give water to the plant apply potassium chloride at 0.5 percent as foliar spray during vegetative stage if there is any moisture stress as we know potassium is meant to help the plant to cope up with the drought or the stress any other stress, disease stress as well so we can apply this case here in case there in case if there is moisture stress and critical stages flowering and pot formation just like any other pulse and pre-emergent pendimethalin post-emergent we can go for kuzelophob ethyl or image depending on the uh, crop okay and spraying of this dap or naa or salicylic acid so this can be done na can be sprayed at the rate of 40 mg per liter and the salicylic acid 100 mg per liter once at pre-flowering and another at 15 days thereafter this will improve the flowering and also the pot development so that's why it is go for uh, spraying there and harvesting so hand picking is done or uh, and uh, if it is a summer crop whole crop is harvested and threshed by animal drawn or tractor so in villages also we may find this pigeon pea or chickpea they'll be led on the roads to uh, thresh by the vehicle and that will separate the seed coat from the seed and that later that seed can be uh, stored so you must have been across this i hope okay so these three were the um, uh, uh, kharif crops and now coming to uh, rabi pulses so we have this chickpea lentil pea lathyrus and french bean these we consider as a rabi pulse crop so among this we will be discussing about only two pulse crop chickpea and lentil okay so i have just uh, pictures here so chickpea everybody is aware of this and lentil uh, especially in northern india we have this masoor dal right so masoor uh, dal curry is very famous in northern part of the country and the pea and the lathyrus and this french bean so beans or the vegetable bean also we can call this yet uh, we can uh, store it i mean if the seeds are dried and stored then we call it as a french bean okay so uh, first we'll uh, talk about the chickpea or the bengal gram all right so chickpea the botanical name is sizer aerietinum so this word sizer is derived from greek word kairos 
which means a well known family Caesaru. Okay, and Ariadinum is a Latin word which means ram's head shape. So, this is a ram or the uh, male, uh, 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 what do you say, male goat, M sorry, male sheep, that is ram. So, ram said you can see here, On if you, uh, if you are well uh, aware of this uh, Kabuli chickpea, which is bolder in nature, uh, which is uh, uh, mainly uh, famous for this Chole Bature, right? So, uh, out of Kabuli chickpea only they prepare that Chole. So, that Kabuli chickpea, you know, that uh, the shape seems to be like a ram's head. So, that's why the word has been derived like that. So, it is also called as a gram or chena, right? It is uh, cultivated in India from a longer period. So, we... Uh, but uh, it is originated from Southwest Asia or Eastern Mediterranean. Eh? If, if you want to be specific, then you can uh, take Turkey as a origin, place of origin for uh, chickpea. So, it is cultivated in other countries as well. Importance, it is uh, predominantly consumed as dal of pre preparing variety of snacks, sweets and condiments. So, everybody uh, is aware of the sweets we prepare out of this uh, uh, floor made out of chickpea. Right, fresh gram serves as a vegetable and it can be eaten raw and busa used for uh, cattle feed, husk and split uh, beans can also be fed to the livestock. It contains around 17 to 21 percent of protein, 4.5 percent of fat and an acidic liquid from glandular hairs of the plant are collected at night which contains 94 percent malic acid and 6 percent oxalic acid. So, this is very important when it comes to chickpea. You may find questions related to this. What are the uh, acids or the constituents we find in the chickpea plant? So, malic and oxalic acid we usually find and it has a medicinal value and it can be used for the preparation of vinegar. So, you must have tasted uh, uh, these leaves or the green pots of chickpea. So, it tastes little salty. That is all because of this uh, acids being produced in the plant. And varieties again two types here. One is desi type and one is kabuli type. So, desi type is ariatinum and kabuli type is a kabulicum. So, the uh, 2n number or the ploidy uh, number you can see here there is 14 and 16 for desi type and it is only 16 for kabuli type so desi types are the smaller one we which we find green color pots or the uh, after drying brown color pots right so those are desi type color of the seeds ranges between yellow to dark brown and it is usually small and they have good branching ability and flower color is purple usually and when it comes to kabuli, it is usually white. Color of the seed is white and it will be bolder, bold and attractive. Yield potential is really uh, poor when compared to the desi type. And they are generally taller than the desi type of chickpea. And flower color will be white here. So, you can see the difference here, desi and kabuli chickpea. And uh, very common crop and you will be aware of this, I hope. So, here you can find different types of color of uh, a seed coat here, green desi, black desi and this is dried and this is a kabuli, kabuli type. The, so, the plant, so green colored one and purple color flower, uh, we especially find in desi type and white color flower in kabuli type. And morphology, just like uh, Ajinkya, kindly uh, do not scratch on the slide please. Okay, and uh, coming to the rooting system, uh, just like any other pulse crop, we have this uh, uh, taproot system, well developed taproot system. They usually have the strong central root system and then the um, uh, secondary tertiary roots will be there. So, uh, you are well aware of the taproot system and the fibrous rooting system. So, I do not have to explain you much. So, we find uh, numerous lateral branches which spread out in all direction in the upper layers of the soil. So, especially uh, the upper layers of the soil will be confined with the majority of the roots there and they have nodules uh, and rhizobium bacteria will be present in the nodules to fix the nitrogen. Okay, so this is uh, you can see here the rooting system and nodules also very small tiny ball like structure we can find on the roots and the stem is generally grayish in appearance. Uh, and the stem is branched with granular hairs like any other pulse crop what I told you earlier those are trichomes so you can see here tiny hair like structures on the stem as well as on the fruit we can find on the leaves 
and uh, so these secrete oxalic malic and citric acid and among all these three acid malic acid is more and uh, i hope you are uh, well aware of this uh, um, flower uh, structure of leguminous crop so five petals we usually find one is a standard petal bigger petal and two wing petals and then two keel petals which are very uh, smaller in nature right so why these uh, types of uh, uh, petals are important these can be asked in exams uh, type of uh, which is the standard what is the uh, type of flower we find in uh, um, legume crops like that okay so this and anthesis anthesis is the opening of the flower so that starts between 9 am to 10 am and may continue up to afternoon and then you can see the chickpea seed here so this gives the radical or the upper thin color that is the testa or the seed coat and uh, when we open up split open the seed we can find it clearly here radical and then the cotyledons and these portions are also important so uh, this deep hilum or the micropyle and soil and climate it can be uh, better it is grown on well drained loam or sandy loam so rainfall uh, or the water requirement up to 800 mm though not uh, entirely it will uh, uh, utilize around 500 to 600 mm of water is uh, much more enough for this crop and the ph range between 5.5 to 8.6 and the optimum ph range is 5.7 to 7.2 and it cannot uh, withstand water logging saline and alkaline so it is common for all the um, pulses it uh, they cannot withstand water logging saline or alkaline condition and it is a long day plant since it is a rubby uh, crop uh, it needs long day here and temperature between 24 to 32 and the rainfall as as i told you 60 to 90 or 60 to 80 that is enough and uh, fine tilth should be there fine seed bed should be there for the plant and then uh, for to uh, overcome the soil crusting we can apply lime and fim at the rate of uh, 12 uh, ton per hectare or coil pith as well and mid uh, the sowing time usually mid october to early november is the optimum time for most of the rabi crops okay and desi varieties radhe chaffa ujjain you must have come across this kabuli varieties also and then the seed uh, seed treatment we can treat with the fungicide and insecticide then we can uh, treat with the uh, rhizobium so uh, how to treat uh, uh, the seeds with rhizobium that we will discuss at the last okay so instead of chemical treating with the trichoderma or pseudomonas can also be done okay and kabuli type seed rate is about 80 to 100 kg per hectare desi type is about 60 to 75 kg per hectare seed soaked in 1% potassium phosphate uh, for 4 uh, hours and then it can be dried and then can be used for the sowing purpose so again the same thing goes here 1 is to 2 is to 1 the ratio of fertilizer application sometimes we avoid potassium if the soil is rich in potassium so rain fed 20 40 if irrigated 20 40 20 depends on the soil and the season we are growing and sowing kabuli type uh, spacing we have 45 by 10 and desi we have 30 by uh, 10 centimeter and depth of sowing is suggested to be 10 centimeter and rubby type of uh, rubby pulses they usually have this hypogeal type of uh, um, uh, what you say germination uh, kharif pulses have epigeal type and uh, uh, rubby pulses have hypogeal type of uh, uh, germination okay and this uh, kerapora method i hope you are aware of like uh, behind the plow that will be put the seeds will be put so like that pora method is better than broadcast and furrow covering should be followed with the plank plank is leveling the soil and then water management grown mostly as a rain fed crop flowering and pot filling are the critical stages we have to avoid water stagnation at all the stages for all the pulse crop okay we can apply uh, flucloralin or pendimethalin as a pre-emergent at 30 days after sowing if not we can go for uh, uh, hand weeding on uh, 15th and 30th day after sowing harvesting these uh, plants will be harvested when they turn brown mature and uh, present yield is 0 0.7 ton that is 700 kg but it can yield up to 1.5 to 2 ton per hectare whereas kabuli will be yield will be much more because of the size of the seed 
and uh, pest important pest of most of the uh, pulse crop is this pod borer helicoverpa and uh, cutworm agrotes and sometimes we also find this um, uh, white flies and uh, jacids also we find and uh, the sterility mosaic virus uh, that is disease so which is especially we find it in uh, pigeon pea so that sterility mosaic virus it is transmitted by this uh, mite aseria kajani i guess so like that specific or the important diseases or the pest you can go through uh, not that you have to memorize all the pest and disease of each and every crop you can just uh, remember the important pest and disease of most of the crop and wilt wilt is very common in pulse crop and uh, this ascochyta blight it is most common in chickpea ascochyta uh, uh, crop uh, uh, sorry blight and the gray mold also we can find okay this is just repeated okay sorry and then the last crop of uh, today's discussion is a lentil which is a lens and school and or lens sculinaris okay so eastern mediterranean region is a place of origin here and it is one of the oldest and most nutritious pulse crop and it has the potential to cover the risk of rain fed farming and it also uh, used as a cover crop to check the soil erosion it will be a deep orange or a orange yellow color the split seed, seeds and it contains protein about 25 percent whereas rest all other pulses they contain protein between uh, they range between 21 to 23 percent okay and it is uh, known as malka masoor or masoor dal and uh, it is distributed especially in uh, asia but also grown in other uh, continents as well and in India, it is mostly grown in the central and eastern part of India, MP, UP, Bihar, West Bengal. So that is the major uh, lentil growing area. And again, coming to the classification, we have two types here, small seeded and bold seeded. Small seeded, they are, those are called as microsperme or masuri. Bold seeded are called as macrosperme or malka masuri. So this small seeded have small rounded seed and these are, these will be yellow or orange in color and testa color will be pale yellow to black especially grown in india nepal and bangladesh and the seed rate is 40 to 45 kg per hectare seed weight is about 1.5 to 2.5 uh, gram per 100 seeds and uh, this bold seeded or the malka masur these are uh, usually larger in size they have yellow cotyledon pale green testa will be there grown in other countries and the seed rate ranges between 55 to 60 kg per hectare and seed weight you can see 3 gram per 100 seeds so this you can see so the first this and this this and this picture tells about the microsperme and this is about the macrosperme and the plant if you had ever been or ever seen the lentil plant here okay <clears throat> it is specially uh, grown in the cold climate and it is not affected by rain at any stages and it is a very hard, hardy plant it can sustain water logging as well okay it can be raised with mo uh, moisture conserved during monsoon period and it can tolerate frost and severe winter and cold temperature during the vegetative stage and the warm temperature during the uh, maturity stage so that is better for the crop and optimum temperature for growth is between 18 to 30 degrees celsius and it can be grown in vast uh, soils like uh, light loamy alluvial or uh, black uh, black soils light black soils like that and the crop can withstand moderate amount of alkalinity acid soils are not suitable acidity is not suitable for any of the pulses anyway but this lentil can sustain a little amount of water logging as well as the alkalinity and seed uh, soil should be made uh, friable proper moisture in soil for proper germination should be there so this relay cropping is uh, famous especially uh, followed in uh, northeastern parts of the country so after rice they will go for this lentil what happens is relay just like uh, this relay race you must have seen so just before uh, uh, harvesting the rice crop of Kharif season they will go for uh, broadcasting of the lentil crop in the standing crop of the rice only so that is a relay cropping and that is mainly followed in MP Bihar UP so that uh, and uh, northeastern part of the country we usually find this relay cropping okay and uh, seed rate uh, if it is normally sown 30 to 40 kg if late zone 50 to 60 kg 
and spacing followed is 30 by 5 centimeter so again the same thing like a fungicide we can treat it with and uh, uh, insecticides and then the um, uh, microbial uh, inoculation also we can treat with and time of sowing especially second fortnight of october if it is delayed then the yield reduction will be there so yield reduction can be reduced by closer spacing higher seed rate right if it is lay, delayed uh, there is a, a delay in sowing what we can do is we can increase the seed rate and a cl closer spacing since the plant will not have to complete most of its vegetative uh, cycle we can um, um, reduce that re reduce the spacing and then we can have higher seed rate here and method of sowing line sowing is done usually so 30 centimeter um, between the rows broadcasting usually uh, this crop is uh, uh, sown as a relay crop only so just like rice fallows we can do that broadcasting and late sown condition the spacing will be reduced and depth of sowing is about 2 to 3 centimeter and water management one to two irrigations we can provide and the first irrigation uh, to be given uh, at 40 days after sowing and second irrigation at flowering or pot formation we can give so nutrient management uh, just like any other crop one is to two is to one uh, so whenever we cultivate after rice we have to apply 0.5 percent of zinc sulfate since uh, these cereals are exhaustive crop they uh, take up most of the macro and micronutrient as well so we have to think about the micronutrients also whenever we are going for pulse crop after cereal crops there and weed management either we can go for fluke chloralin or pendimethalin or hand weeding and uh, harvesting it uh, pots when they turn brown then we can harvest the crop so yield is about 1.8 to 2 ton per hectare but practically we do not get this uh, much of yield in the uh, lentil crop so uh, that was all about uh, my lecture so there was uh, since all were the crops so there was nothing much to explain since i explained most of the concepts in the pulse crop so it's open for discussion guys still i have uh, time so we can have a proper discussion now okay uh, i will permit it to uh, participants so uh, if you have any query or question you can ask directly to the ma'am yes please now participants can unmute uh, yourself in case of ch chickpea nipping means ma'am please tell me nipping 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 yes. means pinching the top portion okay yes. uh, uh, so that is nipping so that what happens is we know that auxin will be there so that usually helps in the uh, growing or the uh, increasing the length of the plant so if it goes on the in, uh, increasing the length there won't be branching so to uh, uh, avoid that length we will pinch out the tip of the plant so that that energy which uh, which is supposed to increase the height of the plant that can be uh, transmitted or we can say that can be diverted to the branches lateral branches and that will help in the fruiting also so that is nipping that is usually done between in chickpea between uh, 40 to 45 days so that is uh, that will be done yes, thank you ma'am okay. any other question guys excuse me madam yes ma'am i have a doubt regarding intercropping yes Ma'am, if we go for intercropping with cereal seed pulses, ma'am. Yes. In that case, we, uh, how can we recommend fertilizers for uh, uh, both cereals and other recommend fertilizers? Okay. See, uh, when we uh, go for intercropping of cereals with pulses, I mean, if cereal is the main crop and uh, pulse is an intercrop, what happens? We usually apply more fertilizer to the cereal crop, and that much of fertilizer is not really necessary for the pulse crop right so what happens is we uh, uh, apply fertilizer basis on the uh, both the crops looking at the both the crops whether uh, required or not so uh, first the main crop that is cereal say for example if you are taking up any uh, cereal crop like uh, maize if at all if i am taking so what i will do is i will apply basal nitrogen application for maize crop and then i will go for intercropping of say black gram or green gram if i am taking and uh, the nitrogen which is already applied for the maize crop so that nitrogen can act as a uh, booster dose or uh, you can say starter dose for the 
for nitrogen initiation and then uh, we can go for application and see whenever we go for intercropping we have to remember that the flowering period or the critical stages of the main crop base crop and then intercrop they should vary if at all say, say for example as i told you maize and green ground maize crop is having a critical period between say 45 to 60 days yeah, whereas this green gram or the black gram they, that will have a critical period between 30 to 40 days so when when these two crops are having different uh, time period or uh, different time phases at uh, for the critical stages then the application of fertilizers become much more easy so as a basal dose we can go go according to the main crop after applying the basal dose we can uh, think of an intercrop or we can apply fertilizer according to the requirement of an intercrop is it clear lokesh yes ma'am thank you ma'am okay uh, any any other question guys okay you want me to explain uh, determinate and in, indeterminate um. Yes, Sachin. Ma'am, relic cropping is mainly crop. Uh, sorry, come again. Relic cropping is in which crop? Relay cropping, see, usually in northeastern part, what they do is they usually go for this rice. After rice, they will go for either lentil or lethyrus. Lethyrus is also one of the rubby crop. Okay. So, relay cropping, as I told you, before harvesting of the rice crop, say some 10 days before harvesting or 15 days before harvesting of the rice crop, we will take up this lentil sowing in standing crop of the rice only. So, uh, like that uh, we can go for relay cropping just like that i mean without emptying the land we can go for that cropping especially done in rice and pulses like uh, lentil and lethyrus thank you ma'am okay nutrient management in mixed cropping that becomes really problematic okay let me give you first tell me uh, what is uh, what is the difference between an intercrop and an uh, mixed crop somebody had dropped earlier so there is uh, what was it jyoti please explain mixed cropping and intercropping can you just differentiate between an intercropping system and a mixed cropping system unmute yourself and you can talk whatever you understand yes you can tell don't hesitate whatever you know you can tell okay let me tell you see intercropping means we will have definite row patterns as i gave you an example of maize and green gram maize and green gram we cannot mix it and uh, uh, broadcast it right so maize will have definite uh, rows and in between ma maize we will have green gram like proper rows will be there but in case of uh, mixed cropping it will not be there that will have no row pattern and the seeds of two crops will be mixed and they will be randomly broadcasted right so in that case that nutrient management becomes really difficult task if at all two pulses you are mixing and broadcasting then the nutrient management can be taken care well of but if a cereal and a pulse or say if a fodder and a pulse so all seed and a pulse if you are mixing like that then it becomes really difficult we cannot uh, harvest a proper yield in that case so mixed cropping is not really recommended only in case if the land is uh, not good not fertile not well enough then we uh, usually recommend this mixed cropping or if at all if the crops of same families uh, we have then we uh, go for that other either otherwise we may also go for mixed cropping in case if there is any uh, crop failure in such cases only we recommend mixed cropping otherwise mixed cropping is not recommended regularly we cannot harvest a good yield in uh, mixed cropping we cannot apply proper nutrients we cannot take care of uh, weeds properly so that becomes a problem so mixed cropping it's difficult we cannot take care like that how can we apply a single uh, um, um, fertilizer i mean so fertilizer to a single uh, single single plant it's very difficult in case of larger area Anoxia means it is a non-availability of oxygen, anoxia. Okay, any other questions guys? Uh, somebody want 
uh, information about determinate indeterminate plant again okay sir okay so determinate and indeterminate say just like you take example of our, our childhood only i mean human development human body development so once we complete our childhood then only we enter into adulthood and then we hold it so like that we have proper definition for our childhood and proper definition for our adulthood similarly in plants what happens we have different stages right vegetative stage we have reproductive stage have we have so after completion of the vegetative uh, 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 life then only uh, we uh, that re it, the plant has to enter into reproductive stage right when there is proper distinction or the differentiation between say if today it is completing the vegetative uh, stage tomorrow it will uh, go for reproductive stage so we have proper distinction between the completion of uh, vegetative stage and the starting of the reproductive stage so when we have proper distinction then we call it as a uh, determinate type of plant but indeterminate means this vegetation and the reproduction goes simultaneously the plant will also increase in its uh, biomass and also it will start flowering and start giving fruits so when reproduction and vegeta vegetative stage they are simultaneously occurring in a plant then we call it as an indeterminate plant so this is special characteristic of pulses okay is that clear okay all right process of bnf through root nodules sure i can explain you again see what happens we know that uh, in uh, plant roots we have the nodules right nodules are the small balls like structure what i showed shown you showed you in uh, pictures there so in those nodules what happens rhizobium bacteria that has a symbiotic relationship with the plant symbiotic means the plant will help the bacteria bacteria will help the plant so that is symbiosis so what happens that rhizobium bacteria will be present in the nodules and when it is present in the nodule that bacteria we can call it as a bacterioid because it changes its shape so that it can fix the nitrogen so when this rhizobium is present in the root nodule what happens the nitrogen which is present in the atmosphere that is in the gaseous form like n2o n2 or no2 that cannot be taken up by the plant directly since plant needs inorganic form of nitrogen either the plant has to take nitrogen in the form of nitrate that is no3 or it has to take either in the form or in the form of ammonical that is nh4 plus so these two are the forms the plant has to take the pulse crop usually take up the nitrogen in the form of no3 that is nitrate right so this n2 which is present in uh, gaseous form that will be fixed or that will be converted to the inorganic form by the rhizobium bacteria which is present in the nodule for the conversion of this atmospheric nitrogen to the nitrate form nitrogenase is the enzyme which will help there and this nitrogenase enzyme is sensitive to oxygen it does not require oxygen if there is presence of oxygen in the root nodules or the rhizosphere then it cannot work properly so nitrogenase enzyme has to work in present in absence of oxygen alone right to avoid uh, of transporting that oxygen to the root nodules and all this leg hemoglobin will help that leg hemoglobin will carry out uh, carry or uh, uh, transport or the divert oxygen from that part so that nitrogenous enzyme can act over there so with the help of nitrogenous enzyme this atmospheric nitrogen will be converted to the nitrate form and that will be stored in the plant and later whenever plant is in need of nitrogen the plant can take up or convert that nitrogen and use it for its processes is that okay do you understand yes ma'am okay all right any other questions guys any other doubts you have okay uh, see uh, in uh, from crops you know we have uh, nearly uh, say cereals we have pulses we have commercial crops we have fodder crops we have oil seeds we have so many nearly around 50 crops 50 plus crops we have to study for exam if you are concentrating on the exam um, so, uh, be it like uh, jrf srf or whatever for srf people whoever is uh, preparing for SR srf let me tell you you have to go for apl applied type of questions uh, from these parts you you will not get questions say like what is the seed rate of this or uh, what is the um, um, uh, uh, 
climatic condition related to no you won't get such type of question you will get maybe yield calculation from this part or you may get some applied type of questions or maybe science behind a particular process from uh, these plants okay just like what i told you about bnf so a question can be asked from bnf like that so srf people please do not uh, uh, concentrate on the basic things like seed rate and all but for the jrf students who are those who are preparing you will have to concentrate on each and every uh, aspect say it origin or the family or the ploidy level of the crop or we you may also expect a seed rate or you may also accept uh, expect some apply type of question just like srf we may uh, some concept can be given and um, in which crop we may find this so like that also we can expect questions since the pattern has been changed so you have to concentrate much on the application part as well any other questions any other doubts you have you can unmute yourself and ask yes if you have any Not doubts you have... to type in the yeah. chat box yes definitely i'll send the yesterday's and today's ppt i'll forward it to uh, pawar sir he'll forward you guys okay uh, so no questions uh, i think uh, no questions are there okay uh, mr nana sir please uh, conclude the session uh, sorry one question is there okay okay sir let me see uh, which factors affect number of root nodules in legume gram has higher number of node nodules same fit see uh, what happens sometimes these climatic factors or the soil factors also and uh, sometimes uh, the uh, plant nature also it affects it's not that we will find 100 nodules in soybean so that's how i will find uh, uh, the same number of nodules on the black gram as well it is not like that it depends on the nature of the plant also uh, even if it is grown in the same field there will be variation in the soil condition from one part of the field to another part of the field maybe that can be the reason or maybe because of the climatic condition also ph of the soil matters and uh, uh, rain or, or the water or temperature so there are various factors that will affect root nodules uh, okay sir i guess uh, no more questions you can conclude uh, Gulesh sir, please conclude. Okay. Uh, we are very much uh, thankful to you, ma'am, on behalf of Agriculture Extension and Communication Department, PGI MPK Viravri. It was a very knowledgeable session, and uh, within a short period of time, you have very greatly uh, taught all uh, crops. Uh, really, ma'am, you have very nicely elaborated all things uh, in crop production technology of chickpeas, lentil, pigeon pea, mug bean, and wood bean crops. Uh, if any question asked in that uh, crop, students will definitely write the correct answers because uh, I saw you have focused on all that uh, points which are asked many times uh, in exams or uh, uh, highest chances of asking uh, such type of questions rather than that uh, usual questions. You have critically explained uh, and answered to what, uh, why and how uh, like uh, that. Uh, there was uh, so much uh, to learn from your uh, lecture. Uh, not only packages of practices, but uh, you have also explained uh, other concepts also like uh, intercropping, how uh, fix nitrogen in uh, soil or uh, for a crop plant. So thank you once again, ma'am, for giving your knowledgeable uh, session and con uh, connected with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Pawar, sir, for giving thank you, me this thank opportunity. You, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, students, for cooperating. All the best. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Uh, you can leave, ma'am. No issue. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, in the afternoon session, due to some important uh, work, the speaker will not available. Uh, that session we will uh, continue in the uh, Saturday morning. This is one announcement to all the uh, participants. Thank you. Thank you, sir.